Hi, my name is Sean Pascal. Uh, I am a detective constable in the Met Police. Um, I've been asked to talk about uh, mental health uh, and how it's affected me. Um, um, you know, looking back, mental health up until probably a few years ago really made uh, didn't mean anything to me. Um, I didn't. I had no idea of what mental health really was. Uh, till I experienced it um, and through counseling um, and, uh, this, and and my own um, hunger to learn um, I've been able to uh, unlock a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that was probably uh, inside me uh, that has held me back in one way or the other um, and I you know I'm now at the point where um, I've been through so many different phases in my journey I've been through the angry stage I've been through the sad stage and and um, and I'm now at a stage um, where I am you know, throughout the whole process, I, I've always wanted to uh, better myself and better my understanding of people um, in order that I don't react or uh, I'm not triggered. Um, and, um, and, and it's been really hard work in doing that. But I've been, I've been blessed in that I've had some really good counsellors and, and people that uh, have been able to help me get my head around things because I think that was the, the biggest thing for me when I sort of hit that wall was nothing made sense and you know it's like everything I believed um, just was just I'd got it so wrong everything is just thrown out the window you know people didn't think the way I thought not everyone thought the way I thought uh, and I was just really really confused um, and I didn't understand, um, and I, I just wanted to understand. I wanted to understand how my white colleagues thought and their perspective, because they often didn't want to speak about the things I wanted to speak about, like race or discrimination. It was a almost like a taboo subject, but I, I needed to talk to someone because I just didn't understand, and I wanted to, I wanted to understand. Um, and um, at the same time, I want, wanted people to understand me as well and know that I'm not a bad person um, uh, and I am trying to do, I'm doing the best I can. Um, and it may not always come across that way, but I also needed to understand that people uh, are doing the best they can and it might not always come out in a good way. Um, and you have to make allowances for people because you don't know their journey or where they are on their journey. Um, and, you know, so, you know, I'm talking about this now, but I wasn't able to articulate this because it's, you know, it's taken a lot for me to get here. Um, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm on that journey uh, and I'm keen to share. I'm keen to understand. Uh, um, and, um, and, you know, I, I want to keep building uh, bridges um, through what I'm learning and, and, and use it for some good. But, you know, it has, it, it has taken its toll on me. Uh, you know, I, I make no secret of that uh, physically as well, you know. And, and every day is, is, can be a struggle for me uh, with my mental health. Um, there's days um, I just don't want to talk to anyone or I can't talk to anyone and even to do this interview um, I had to be in the right mindset and I had to muster up the energy or strength um, because the last thing I want is you know, or, or I worry about is is um, uh, that I might come across uh, wrongly because of my state of mind uh, um, so you know I, I'm very weary 
of that. Um, so yeah, it's 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 such a challenging thing, mental health. But you know, it's but what I'm realised over the years is, regardless of what you've been through, uh, it uh, uh, and you know I'm, I'm talking about um people that are perhaps from a gay background that have suffered as a result or a woman um or you know it doesn't matter um what sort of discrimination it is uh the impact is all the same it's you know um and and it's not a good it's it's it's, it's a really lonely place to be um and that's sort of why I'm quite passionate about mental health um, and I'm qu quite passionate about um, uh, people learning about it, trying to learn about it and understand it um, and I'm quite protective of people uh, that are vulnerable because of uh, mental health because it often doesn't come out as such and they can find themselves uh, in a very difficult situation uh, where they're close to losing their job uh, because of poor attendance or their work uh, has suffered. Um, and, you know, because of things that are going on in their life, um, especially in policing, because um, we just learn to cope and just take everything on. And before you know it, there's stuff coming at us all, all the time. and and. Um, and these things happen, and then um, so it's important that we can identify when people are going through mental health issues, and um, more importantly, be in a position where we can support them um, and, and give them everything they need. Um, because it's it, it's it's learning. It's something that doesn't go away, but you can learn to cope with it, um, and um, and it takes as long as it takes. There's no, you know, that's the other thing like uh, supervisors and people need to realise you can't put a time on this. It might take someone a year, three years. Um, so you have to be patient um, and not give up on, on people um, because, you know, regardless of whether you've got mental health or not, um, you still have a lot to contribute, hell of a lot. And the only losers are going to be the organisations that give up on these people. So yeah, I'm big on mental health. They certainly have been very supportive of me uh, with my mental health, and um, and you know, uh, and uh, that means a lot to me. That means a, a, a you know, um, so you know, uh, so uh, and because you know they've got great um, mental health counselors but i think you know we're now dealing with so many things covid and all these things um uh i think uh, in the police um we need it more than ever um you know we've got so much to deal with um but you know the, the police can only do so much and they're doing i know they're doing the best they can um, and they care about their officers, um, we, like we all do. Um, and um, so, you know, but but there are organisations out there uh, that have tried to step in and, and fill some of those voids. So, and there's always help out there. So it's just, um, you know, reaching out and, and, and getting it. So, yeah, I think um, within policing, um, it's a discipline service. It comes from that very regimented background. And in the past, we've often uh, looked to recruit people maybe from military background, and we've always sold the police on being able to jump out of helicopters and um, carry guns and drive cars and uh, blue lights and everything. So it's got that macho sort of feel about it. Um, and, you know, like you said, you know, with that comes that sort of shield, that armour uh, that you've got to be um, a roughy toughy sort of person uh, and, uh, and, and Teflon. 
um, and 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 also you know we're dealing with lots of traumatic things. Um, so and we just got to get on with it. And you know if we if we break down every time, we 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 deal with some traumatic thing. Um, we wouldn't have any police left. So um, so yeah, there, there is there is that part. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's uh, it's it's finding that balance there. Um, or, or being able to just support uh, our officers, like I said before, or letting them know that the support is there and there's no shame uh, in, in reaching out and getting that support. Um, uh, for me, growing up as a, a, ma as a man, um, yeah, especially from the Caribbean, uh, you know, these things just uh, were pretty much alien to us um you know again you know it's just this we men were men and uh we didn't we didn't weren't allowed to have feelings and cry and get upset you know it just it just didn't happen it just it wasn't a side we showed um and you know um and i but you know i think that's not just exclusive to the caribbean i think that's just that generation um because you know, I, I suppose you know the, they've a lot of them have uh, the older generation have had that tough upbringing. You know, they've 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 lived through some um, horrific times. They've lived through wars, um, so they they've had to be tough and resilient um, uh, just to survive. Um, and, um, and and in the police, yeah, you, yeah, you have to be the same way to a certain degree. Um, but you know, with with um, there's more um, science behind it now, behind uh, and there's more understanding um, and um, research uh, behind mental health and 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 how to to deal with it. Um, so yeah, I think you know it's it's and and it's and and if you actually look into it. You know, there's a lo lot we can learn about the mind. Um, uh, they say we only use 5% of our brain. Well, you know, I'm curious to know what the other 95% can do, uh, <laughs> whether I've got mental health or not, or not, you know. If there's something to be gained, I, I want to find it. So if anything, you know, uh, whether you have mental health or not, you know, it's all about self-development and uh, we should definitely explore or take the time out to explore uh, and unlock what, what, what we can actually achieve. So, yeah, um, that's, that's my outlook on, on, on or approach to dealing with it, uh, mental health. And so, yeah.